talking about he ain't getting no rematch because he was being a sore loser. In this sport, it's either you're gonna win, you're gonna lose, or you're gonna get a draw. And you gotta take that like a man. You gotta take your loss like a man the way you take your wins. You see the way I did my last fight? I took that on the chin. There was nothing I could do. I could have went up there and cried, nah, 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 and made excuses. That wasn't me, that wasn't me. I, I, I was sick, I was this. I didn't make no excuses. I take my loss on the chin like a man. So why he didn't take his? Now he ain't getting no rematch, and I'm going back to my weight class. <laughs> Questions for Chris? Are you concerned at any time in the fight? No, when I, I ain't gonna lie. When I got dropped, I didn't even know what hit me. It was so quick, like, I didn't know what hit me. But when I, I opened my eyes, I'm like, oh shit, he, he dropped me. I said, prom, stay composed, stay composed, stay relaxed. I'm from the trenches, I'm from the mud. And we done been through worse than that, like, so that ain't about nothing. It's just about how you get up and how you handle the situation. I got up and I started backing him up. He called me with good shots, I ain't gonna lie, he called me with good shots, but I started dictating the fight with the jab, started backing him up, touching the body. There's no question that if I won, then I'm. I mean, he can have his opinion, but like I said, he still has his opinion. Everybody got an opinion. It's like we all got an asshole. Questions for Chris Primetime Colbert? Raise your hand and ask away for the former world champion going back down to his weight class. At yes, I am. I'm going to get my belts. I ain't this. I ain't a 135 pounder naturally. I just went up to prove something. And I got the victory. I would, like I said, I would have gave him a rematch. I'm, 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 I don't care. I'm, I'm in this sport just to create a legacy, and that's that's a that's a fight that could create a legacy. Me and him fighting again, but he was being a so loser. He was talking crazy. I'm not with all that. I'm, I'm a I'm a professional man. Since we have you here, I might as well ask you: uh, Who do you are you targeting anybody at 130? I'm on my. I, I was curious. I was curious to see if you're going to stay at 35. You're going back to 30. You mentioned you staying at 30. Is there anybody that you have your sights set on right now? I want my rematch. That's how I can't get my you want, rematch. You want to fight Hector Luis Garcia next? If I can't get my rematch, then uh, whoever Al Hamer sent to me, I, I'm going to take him. All right. You know, you know, I was never one of those fighters shy to take a challenge. Because if, 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 if you want to get technical, I could have came back. Al Hamer offered me lesser opponents. I could have came back and took a bump. I said, nah, what am I proving by fighting these guys? I'm gonna beat them, and I'm walking around with my chest high like, yeah, I'm the man, I'm the man. Nah, let me fight somebody that's a shark. Let me swim with the shark, and I don't even know how to swim. You have been and, and worked your way up in your career. What was it like fighting at the MGM Grand Garden Arena here, a venue that is iconic for prize fighting? You're from Brooklyn, Mike Tyson fought here numerous times, of all the greats, you're a student of the game. What did that mean to you? Shit, this was a dream come true, I always, like my first fight, first time I ever being here, I was Pacquiao versus Thurman, and I'm like, damn, this this atmosphere is electric. Like, I want to fight here one day. And I, used to, growing up watching, I used to watch Floyd fight here, so I was like, damn, when I want, I want to fight. Like, I'm not a big fan of Vegas. Every time I came to Vegas, it was always something. But are you a fan of Vegas now? Nah, nah, I'm still not. I, I, I live my dream. I live my dream. I ain't coming back. I already lived my dream by fighting in the MGM Grand. I ain't coming back. Put me in Barclays Center. All right, so Chris Colbert obviously wants to go home. Do we have any more questions for Chris Primetime Colbert? We got one in the back. And then uh, we'll open it up for final comments for Chris and allow him to enjoy the rest of his evening. All right, uh, rock it off. Oh, over here, rock it off for .com. Congratulations. Thank you, brother. You coach uh, Sosa Crew. So, Sosa Crew yeah. for life. Um, I know you had a, a rivalry uh, with Frank Martin a little bit, and Spence put out a tweet. Better be well, I, I already said I'm not fighting at 35. I'm going back down to 30. So if he want to come down, let's get it rocking. But I'm not staying at 35. I'm going to my weight. So it, going to my weight. So Frank wants to go down to 30. You would yeah, let's tangle. I'm ready to dance. I don't. I don't duck and dodge from nobody. I just learned how to dance salsa too, so I'm ready. <laughs> Chris, final thoughts as you conclude your evening here in Las Vegas with the victory over Jose Valenzuela. Um, like I said, I just want to thank my team, everybody that got something to do with this. I want to thank my family, my friends, Al Heyman, Showtime, Steven Espinosa. I just want to thank everybody, man. We did it tonight. And uh, shout out to uh, Ryu Venezuela. There's no hate in my blood. I'm not a hater. Uh, he came in there and put up a hell of a fight. But he ain't getting no rematch. I'm out. Bye-bye. All right, Chris Goberly.